Okay, it's 201. Let's get started because, gosh, who can hold back the fun and excitement that, that, that we have in store for you? Mm. Anyhow, so, um, Bob Coppage, CEO of Simplex IT. Uh, and uh, basically, we have a session, our latest, in our semi weekly webinars to help people deal with the whole work from home changes and all that. And we're going to be dealing with the topic of collaboration. And first of all, for those of you who have been with us these past uh, couple of weeks, we'll go forward. Uh, we've got some caveats you are know. Not going to deal with any of the healthcare specifics, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, we're really looking at, uh, for this topic, we're really looking at collaboration based on Office 365. Now, a lot of what we're going to be talking about is on uh, strategies and some of the tool methodologies. Um, but in order to demo it and all that kind of fun silliness, uh, we need something to, to kind of anchor around. And so we're going to choose Office 365. Now, I want to make very clear here. Uh, you can do a lot of the same sort of things with Google Docs and with some of the other, especially for larger organizations, uh, other types of products and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, but we're going to show you the, the dog food that we're, we're used to. People, especially organizations, when they're looking to change from on-premise to cloud-based, they'll say, gee whiz, we don't know. Should we go to Google? Should we go to Office 365? And often you'll hear somebody say always because their favorite tool is, is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Uh, whatever their tool is, you know, we're Microsoft, so we go Office 365, it's always Office 365, or it's Google because it's always Google. It's a little more complicated than that. And usually the example that I use is Google tools uh, are primarily online. So there really isn't anything that's installed on your computer, or when there is, they're kind of weak, all right? Um, Office 365 and Microsoft tools is pretty much, they have a combination. They have both the, the cloud-based, and we'll get into the details on that a little bit later, and they also have the on-prem. So they win a little bit in terms of the flexibility. You can have stuff, so if you're not connected to the internet, you can still work with Microsoft. Uh, it's a little tougher to do with Google. The other issue is Google is aimed at the individual. They add the corporate stuff later. So Google is really about personal and individual productivity and some of the really cool things that you can do, and it's really fantastic and all that kind of fun stuff, and it's, they're really good at it. Microsoft is the exact opposite. Microsoft really looks for the corporate level of productivity and working, the top level management, all that kind of thing, and then they add the individual. Now, in both cases, both companies really recognize what the other one has and what they lack. So they are constantly looking to add additional features that are either in Google's case over on the corporate side or in Microsoft's case on the individual side. So uh, another example of this will be, and this is does not involve Google, but you're going to see a lot of uh, stuff added to Teams in the next near future, like next month or two, to really compete with Zoom. Um, the Meet Now options, the uh, right now, Microsoft Teams is pretty much limited to four cameras you see at a time. They're really looking to add to that. Uh, and I think they'll be doing so in the relatively near future. So uh, when we talk about cloud stuff, we talk about collaboration tools. Boy, is stuff dynamic and is stuff changing. So stay tuned. Um, but this is our, oh, wow. It's our seventh topic. And we actually had one before this. So really, this is our eighth, eighth webinar uh, in the last two months uh, for collaboration best practices. Um, all of them, except for the work from home habits, are up on YouTube because we had problems with that guy, and I just need to get off my butt and fix that one up. Uh, right now, we have two more. We have another one on Thursday, and then we've got one on Tuesday, the 21st. And honestly, we are talking about whether we're going to continue this or not. We're not really getting a lot. We got a couple of suggestions on some teams, on, on some themes. Um, the other thing we're also considering doing is instead of webinars to actually do like 15, 20 minute videos that we can put online. So we would love to get some feedback from you guys, especially if this is working, if you really enjoy this. And also, you know, uh, share some on social media, share some love. We'd love to get some, some additional folks to attend. Uh, 
you know, no matter what we do, we will continue to share our knowledge, our skills, our tools, our tips, all of that. So that isn't going to change. It's just a question of how we do that. So we would love some feedback from you guys. It would very much uh, be very helpful. Um, okay. So uh, as always, we have uh, the chat window is up in case anybody has any questions or anything along those lines. And so oh, Anne wants, yeah, cool, Anne, absolutely. If you can suggest more ideas, we would love it because uh, that's really the big thing. So takeaways, just as before, as we've done before, we've got brain, we've got brawn. We've got things you should think about and then things you should actually do. Um, when we talk about collaboration, uh, there's a lot of, I don't want to say preparation, but a lot of a, a lot of benefit can be had if you're going to be consistent on this. And that's kind of what we're going to be talking about here. So we're really just going to set the stage and then just going to, we're going to go through the 365. And Patty, by the way, I forgot to mention to you, uh, I'm probably going to ask you to do a couple of things uh, on, on the team side of things so I can kind of demo it. So you're welcome for the warning. <laughs> no problem. So First of all, we're going to set the stage, then we're just going to do some demos on some, some things that you can do. And again, we're going to be talking about Office 365, uh, but we're also going to be talking about the business need for doing these things and how, how you can do them. We're not necessarily going to talk about how you can do them with the other tools, but that you can do them with other tools. So bear with that. So let's start. The definition of collaboration is the action of working with someone to produce or create something. Duh. Teamwork. Uh, we're getting together. And Here's the thing. When we talk about that, uh, what we don't do is we don't really talk about uh, the, the metrics in terms of are these people with the same skill sets? Are these people with differing skill sets? Are these people who are going to be working on stuff simultaneously? Are they going to be working on it some in the morning, some in the evening? Are these people who are going to be working on it uh, with the same tool set, within the same organization? All of that kind of fun stuff. And here's the thing that in my opinion, most organizations, oh, absolutely, are some on the Mac? Actually, Office 365, everything we show right now is going to be on the Mac. Plus, a lot of these tools are available on the Mac because they're cloud-based. You're actually doing everything through, through websites. And so in a lot of cases, you're going to see that the tools are available on Macs, on Androids, on your phones, on PCs, on dumb terminals, all of that kind of fun stuff. But there's, there, there can be some differences in terms of the functionality. We'll talk about that. Remind me about that later when we get into some of the demos. So, but good question, Ann. The rest of you, Ann is showing you up, okay? She's going to suggest ideas and she had a question. The rest of you, I mean, come on, it's a mime contest out there, so pick it up. Anywho. When we talk about people involvement, internal employees, between organizations, and then the one-to-many, the presenter attendees, like this one. And one of the reasons I point out these three things is because when you think about it from a security standpoint, these are really the three layers of security that we run into. When we're talking about strictly internal employees, well, then whatever you're using in order to verify and authenticate your employees they're all logging into the network, they're all logging into Office 365, whatever, that you can use that same methodology to make sure that everybody is who they say they are. Remember, whenever we talk about cybersecurity, we're really talking about two things. One is authentication. Are you who you say you are? And then the second is authorization. Authorization is, okay, now that we know who you are, what are you allowed to do? With internal employees, you're all authenticating and authorizing through the same technology. Microsoft, Active Directory, Google, using Google Docs, whatever. That makes it so much easier. Between organizations, company A, company B, company A has their own security, company B has their own security. How do we meet between them? So that we can basically share the resources, but I know that employee XYZ over in company B is truly that person. Usually there's some trust involved. And we can talk about that a little bit. That's usually, however, on the, the IT side. And if anybody's in internal IT, needs some help, contact us. We'd love to talk to you about that. And then you also have presenter attendees. 
presenter attendees is kind of like what's going on here. And that is, I really don't care who any of you are because I'm not sharing anything from you. I'm sharing with you. And so we're okay with anonymous people connect, connecting and joining. And by anonymous, I mean, you may be putting your name in, but I have no idea if it's the right name. I have no idea if you're, if anything. And I don't care because this is open. You can also have presenter attendees where, no, we're talking to, uh, we're doing a meeting uh, with the sales force. So I have 20 salespeople that are nationwide. We're all meeting at this point. There's still one presenter and the attendees. And the nice thing is, is the tool sets that we're talking about pretty much can work with all of these uh, configurations and they can also restrict all of these configuration if the organization doesn't want to allow uh, everybody access the same level of access. Okay. So I just want to talk about that briefly from a conceptual standpoint, how this works between, both within organizations and outside of organizations, but also that there are or there is some security involved, and but the security can be handled internally by the tools without really getting in the way, if it's set up correctly, without really getting in the way of the participants. So, cool. So what are some examples? So we have multiple people working together on a project. Projects are, you know, phases, tasks, individual items, things that we need to get done. And a person can be working on different parts of it, but they're all working together. So a collaboration, if you will, huh, on a project. Uh, similarly, you could have two people who are working on a single document. Now that can be two people. So for example, you have a salesperson who is working on a proposal, but needs to talk to somebody who's dealing with who knows the product or the services well enough so that they can make sure that the proposal actually says things appropriately or legal or whoever. But also the salesperson can then work with the potential client outside of the organization to actually work together because that way when the, when the uh, potential client receives the proposal, they already know the verbiage is acceptable to both parties. So that can happen. And then a regular meeting. So we do, for example, uh, we do what we call the L10 meetings every Tuesday morning, uh, where we all get together online and we, we work on documents, we go through maybe some standard tools and all that kind of fun stuff. And then finally, on demand. I've got a situation, I've got a document, I'm working on it right now, and I want to talk to a person or multiple people or whatever on these things. So those are just some of the examples. But the bottom line is, I have a group of people that I want to work together with either immediately or over a period of time that are going to work to fashion some kind of result. So, cool, Doreen, you're on Apple. That absolutely works fine. Again, I'm speaking specifically on 365, but Google Docs works the same way. Uh, in a lot of cases, in 365, all of the 365 on-prem applications, Office and all that, are available on the Mac. And in the case of Google Docs, as well as 365, you can also just get them through the web. Cool, and why is this? Because the data for most of these collaboration tools, by far and large, most data is in the cloud. And this can be in the public cloud, such as Office 365, Google Docs, whatever. Some organizations can actually create a private cloud where it's their own servers. Those servers may be stored in uh, Microsoft, Azure, Amazon's, AWS, whatever. But, but the most common and the ones we're going to be talking about is where the data is in the cloud. Now, what this means is, is that for the most part, we're going to talk about a couple of exceptions. For the most part, we need to be online and especially if we're going to be working on documents simultaneously. The tools don't necessarily have to be. So when I run Word, I want to actually modify a document. I could be running Word installed on my computer. I could be running Word going through Teams, or I could be running Word in the cloud. I have the option of doing any one of those three, and they all have benefits and they all have drawbacks. And one of the nice things is, again, about Office 365, is that I get whatever the strongest tool is for my particular need. So, for example, the version of Office that's installed on my computer, whether it be a PC, a Mac, an Android, has the most features. 
Okay, so when I want the largest feature set, I can use the on-prem, the locally installed product, or I can use the others if I want to um, if I want to move about. So now the first takeaway on this is absolutely, and this is something that Microsoft and Google and Salesforce and other companies do not talk about enough. The cloud data is not backed up by default by the providers. Office 365 data and Google Docs data are not backed up. So if you accidentally uh, screw up your data, and that's a technical term, if you uh, if you get hit with malware and your, all of your emails get encrypted, uh, Microsoft cannot help you. And I say Microsoft, I also mean Google. If it turns out your data gets deleted, then Microsoft will hold on to the deleted files for a while, but after that, they're not, they're not available. So absolutely, because collaboration is a critical, is a critical practice that we're doing, if you're going to do collaboration, make sure your data is backed up. If there's one takeaway on this, this is it. Uh, because remember, and we've, we've said it often before, um, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And Anne's already Italian. Anne is uh, on fire. Uh, back up to topics would be a good would be a good tool or a good topic. Back up topic would be a good topic. Smooth, Robert. So make sure your stuff is backed up. Okay. And number two, I love tabletops. That's basically where you sit down around a table, virtually, of course, these days, and just say, how should we organize? Because remember what I was saying is that there's a lot of ways that organizations can handle or can uh, uh, deal with collaboration. And if you, as an organization, originally set up, okay, Sharon, you like that idea? Oh, for backups? Uh, right now, we use uh, Barracuda. Uh, for backups and also for uh, some protection and all that kind of fun stuff. So that's a good idea. We'll, we'll do that as a topic. So if you organize your collaborators ahead of time using Office 365, Google Docs, whatever, that makes it so that when someone comes, and I'm speaking more from a management standpoint, when someone within the organization says, hey, I want to work together with this group or that group, the chances are pretty good there, there's already a group that represents those folks. And what I mean by that is, here's what you can do. You start in 365 or Google Docs, whatever, and you create groups, which are a collection of people, collection of users, one that represents the entire organization because everybody needs to be involved on this. And this could be, hey, we're thinking of doing a picnic or doing a virtual meeting. Anybody have any ideas of what to do or whatever? But the entire organization has access to that. The second would represent your organizational structure. That would be groups that would be departments, one group, one department, and sub-departments. So you could have one group for accounting, one group for accounts receivable, one group for account payable, because a user can be members of multiple groups. Then you have also management layers. So department heads, division heads, whatever. So, and, and you can see how we're basically answering the question, what groups would likely want to work together on some things? And we're just creating groups on it because groups are free. They're easy. You just have to maintain them as people either are hired, as people uh, leave the organization, and if people get promoted or they change their job role. Then you've got the tricky ones. And by tricky, I don't mean they're hard or whatever, but you look for functional groups. These are groups that aren't necessarily in the same department or same division or on the same level, but they all deal with the same thing. Quality control is my favorite. Uh, so if you've got a quality control group uh, that you can basically just put the members of that group in there, you could have similar if you had some uh, product development. Uh, you would have a similar if you had uh, representatives or anything along those lines. And then if there's a specific project. So you can have a project that you will invite people to be part of, and then at the end of the project, you may disband the group. No big whoop. And then finally, invite internal folks. 
If you set up teams appropriately from a security standpoint, and you can limit this, and there are reasons to do it both ways, you can actually invite external people into your group. External meaning they work for other organizations. So let's take quality control, for example. Let's say that your quality control process includes a vendor representative who has a vested interest in the quality of the product. Or you could also have one that deals with uh, a project. And the project involves the clients. You can invite them into these teams or groups and organizations so that they can get the exact same benefit, pretty much, uh, that the rest of your organization gets. So pretty straightforward. And I hate to tell you, that's pretty much it, except for demos. And do they need an Office 365 license? In this particular case, they don't, they need to have some kind of Microsoft security, which can be either an Office 365 license or a Windows Live, like an Outlook.com or a Hotmail account, which are free. So they don't need to have a 365 license, but they have to have some kind of credential that Microsoft recognizes. So I, am I hearing that that would be another topic? Absolutely. Ed, Mary, Alan, so using SharePoint to collaborate, actually all of the data in Teams is stored in SharePoint and or OneDrive. So let's do this. Now what I've got is I've got an actual machine that I'm remoted into that we're going to be doing Teams on. And really, and this is actually Simplex IT's teams. So you can see we've got one for the entire company. We've got one for our techs, management, senior techs, marketing and sales. We've got one on podcasts, which we're going to use. And then we've got teams co-managed, external, external co-managed IT services. That actually has all of the technicians who work for other companies. Uh, members of that so that they can comment together and collaborate together. Hiring for uh, that has uh, where we go over uh, either our hiring processes, uh, resumes, that kind of thing. We have a project here for internal security, marketing, sales, uh, technology, business review, so on and so forth. But what we've done is we have one here for podcast. Oh, I'm sorry, we're going to say create a new team. It's pretty straightforward. I can create a team here, and I can create it from an existing 365 group or team. You remember we were talking about how to create groups? So all I have to do from then, I'm not going to go through the whole thing because we're already running out of time. So we created this podcast, and then we have posts. which is basically just the chatting, and anyone who is a member of this team can see this and can chat or can add to it, and we can add pictures, we can add attachments, uh, we can do emojis, graphics. We can also meet now if we want to. So we've all of got all of those things. We also, by default, get files. And all I have to do is just to drag a file into here, and it'll be added, and everybody can see that. So it's very simple to do. And then we'll talk about these other two tasks here in a moment. And then in the files, if I want to, and Patty, I'm going to ask you to open this file as well. I can open the file. I can copy the link, make it a tab, download. I can open it in SharePoint so I can do that. So Sharon, how do you organize your chats? That each each team has, or excuse me, each channel in a team has their own chats, and you can search within and throughout those. So if you can have, for example, uh, let's say marketing, no, let's take management. So management, we have all of these channels. Each one of these channels has their own chat thread. And I can search within them, and I can also have, take a look and have individual chats that are just with people and multiple people as well. So I have a lot of flexibility there, and I can search throughout any and all of these. 
So in the podcast notes, which is an Excel sheet, and I can just create a brand new one if I want to, including folders, I'm going to open it, and I can open it in either Excel Online, which is the web, or I can open it in Excel, the on-premise product, or I can edit it in Teams. I'm just going to go with Edit in Teams. And the file will then open. And this version of, of Office, since it's not the installed on the desktop version, is not as powerful, but it's it still works pretty well. And I can close it and then open it in regular, off, or regular Office if I want to. And you'll notice I appear, she's editing as well. And it even tells me she's on B10. But if I put something here, like this is a comment, she will see it appear on hers. And Patty, if you want to edit something or change something. Bob, what tab are you on? I can't tell. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm on repeating topics. Where are you? Okay, I was in ratings. I'll meet you in repeating topics. <laughs> And she even shows up, so I see where she's editing. And I can do this with multiple people. So we can all work on the same topic. And it's automatically saved. So I don't have to worry about losing changes or anything along those lines. So it's that easy. By the document being in Teams, and, the, and, and by being in Teams, it can be in a team or it can be on an individual chat. It can go either way. And we can work on the document simultaneously and actually see the updates as we're doing them. And this works in Word, this works in PowerPoint, this works in uh, Excel, uh, works in a number of different applications, but the applications have to be Teams aware. Okay, cool on that. Uh, another thing I want to show real quick is implementation, and that is a planner project. And Patty, we're talking about that Thursday? Is that right? Yes, this Thursday. Cool. This is basically a way to do project management in Teams and not project management as PERT charts, Gantt charts, all that kind of thing that Patty finds so terribly interesting, and I mean terribly. But you can essentially have to do's, to do's for individuals, all that kind of fun stuff, so that everybody in this team can see what their tasks are, what their deadlines are, all of that. I'm not going to go too much into this because, like I said, Patty's going to be talking about this uh, pretty much specifically on Thursday. So, and I added this by just saying plus and added a planner tab. So I can add any or all of these tabs to this team. So I'm not stuck with just having the the files and the posts. I can add additional stuff as well. So if I wanted to, I could add an Excel sheet. So we'll add the one that's there, which basically means that people will be able to go into Teams who are allowed to go to the Podcast General and then just go right over to this tab and make changes. So this is like a primary project or a primary aspect of the channel of that team. It's right there and you can play with it. Okay. And then the, only, the other couple of things I wanted to show was on a chat. If I go over to just the chat that Patty and I have been having, what I can do from right here is and right now the the machine that I'm remoted into because it's I don't want to we're, we're meeting on Teams and I'm demoing Teams so I'm doing it on a different machine. Uh, I can't do a video call because it's a virtual machine and there is no camera. But it would give me the option to do that. I can, however, do an audio call, which essentially allow us to do what we're doing right now. Uh, I can also do a screen sharing session, and you'll notice I also same thing. I can add files. We can work on files. And if I had a file that I wanted to, to review with her, all I had to do is just drop it here, drag and drop, 
and then we can open it and we can work on it and chat and talk and all of that kind of fun stuff together. And I don't have to set it up as a actual, hey, let's get together at two o'clock or some particular time. We can do it on demand here very easily. Another thing that I could do if I was so inclined is if I go over to my Outlook, and I go down to my calendar, and I want to just say, hey, I want to get together. Boy, my calendar is nuts. I have a new Teams meeting. And just like that, I can add as many people as I want, whether they're part of my organization or not. And it'll just send those out. And people would get the link that you're using right now, including the phone, because we're using the uh, audio uh, option, including the phone number. So I'm just trying to, and unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I'm feeding you with a fire hose. Um, but these are some of the things that we have. Now, one of the things that we're doing is we are recording this message or this meeting. And all I needed to do was in the meeting, is to go in and, oh, I can't do that here because I don't have a meeting going on. Um, in the meeting itself, there's a very simple, and I'll, I'll do a video to show how to do it, a very simple way to start recording the meeting. When you record your meetings in Teams, they end up in a product that Microsoft doesn't talk about much, but we did talk about it last week called Stream. And what Stream does is it will record your videos here and post them. So you have all of your 365 videos, all of your Teams videos here. And then you can create what are called groups or channels and essentially assign groups to those videos. Apparently, this is going to take a while. So I'm just going to show you the result of that. So if we take a look at, go back here, and podcast, and you'll remember I was saying we can add stuff. So in the Teams, I've added an additional tab that has a list, here are all the webinars that we've done. So all of the videos, and they don't have to be in Teams. I can do a, a video any way, shape, or form you want to and then upload it to stream, add it to a channel, and assign the channel to here, to Teams, which means that people will be able to go, and let's say, for example, I had a, a team or a channel here that was for our sales group. Okay, sales group is John. But anyway, so let's say I had a sales force of 15 salespeople working remotely. And we do weekly sales meetings, and not everybody can make it. So what we'll do is we'll record the meetings and then up, move them in streams over to the channel, to the group, and they'll automatically download and be available to everybody who's, who, whether they want to see it uh, or whatever. So, uh, Dale, when recording a meeting, can you pause the recording, take a break, and then restart? You can do what you're asking. So what you would do is it would essentially will create an MP4 file for every time you record. So in that particular case, you would have two MP4 files. So what you would do is you would download them, and using any number of cheap video editing, you would then add them and splice them together. Uh, you know, we use a product called VideoPad, which cost me like 30 bucks or 40 bucks. Uh, yeah, w whatever the tool is. And, uh, it, and it does not take long at all. So the answer to your question is no, you can't in stream, but you can using any other tool and then upload it back. So you may even not want the raw footage of the meeting in that particular case to be up there or to be up there visible by everybody, only the edited version. However you want to fly. OK? 
Okay. Or you can just post them as part one of two, part two of two. You can go either way you want. Okay. So, unfortunately, this is pretty much this is pretty much what we had and what we had time for. There is a huge amount of things you can do here. Uh, we'd be happy to, to, to go into detail with this stuff. So we've got a couple of topics we've heard from people. Um, one of the links here you'll see is, is if you'd like to have a phone call, 30-minute phone call on this or any other issues or, or topic or the like, happy to do that chat with you. And would love some feedback. Absolutely. And we also, if, if you feel so inclined, please post on social media what we're doing, how we're doing. Uh, I'd love to see some more people take advantage of this. We're here to help. Uh, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, and then the next, and I think there may be some, we may have switched the topics around a little bit, but on Thursday is going to be project management and planner. Uh, and then on the 21st is Office 365, and it sounds like we'll probably have a couple more topics after that. Any other questions? Is this useful? Maybe. Cool. All right, then. Um, that's pretty much it. If there aren't any questions or anything along those lines. So thank you all. Uh, stay safe. All that good fun stuff. And uh, see you all Thursday, hopefully. Thanks.